Have you seen the new AI generative journey creator? Want to know how to integrate Cucumber with Playwright? And is Cypress and open source in general dying? Find out on this episode of the Test Skill News Show for the week of August 20th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. But first, are you looking to take your automation project to the next level? Look no further than Apply Tools and their visual AI validation testing platform. Trust me, it is a game changer. Plus, you can try it out for yourself by creating a free account now by clicking on the special link in the first comment down below and see the difference for yourself. First up is a new feature by Test Results that I think is going to start gaining more and more popularity. So I noticed on this landing page, you have something called Prompt Your User Journey, Generative Journey Creator. So based on this, I just found out that Test Results unveiled its groundbreaking Gen AI Powered Journey Creator. It revolutionizes the way test cases are designed and users can now simply prompt their desired user journey and the system autonomously crafts the precise test steps tailored to the application. And definitely check out this video that's embedded in the landing page because it goes over this feature and how helpful it's going to be. It's a quick demonstration on how AI seamlessly identifies and selects elements, even adopting to new pages it hasn't even encountered before. So you can dive into the magic with this two-minute explainer video. Check it out and let me know your thoughts about this in the first comment down below. Want to know how to bridge Playwright and Cucumber for enhanced web automation? Then let's check this out. So this post by Kayla, she goes over Microsoft's open source framework Playwright, which is designed for web automation for end-to-end -end testing across various browsers and has found a harmonious partner in Cucumber, which if you don't know, is a renowned testing framework championing behavior-driven development. And so in this recent article by Kalesh, he goes over the integration of these two powerful tools and it explores in depth how to do this by combining Playwright's capabilities such as cross-browser support, network interception, and automatic weighting. So with Cucumber's natural language format, developers could then craft tests that are both technically robust and easily understandable for non-technical stakeholders. And Kalesh provides a comprehensive guide on setting up and executing tests using this integration, emphasizing the potential for clearer communication and more effective testing processes. For those interested in leveraging the combining strength of Playwright and Cucumber, the full guide is available on Medium, and you can get that link in that first comment down below. So another helpful article I found on Medium is a post on the art of debugging automated tests. So in the ever-involving world of automated testing, failures are not uncommon, especially when tests are newly written. So in this article, Victor delves into the importance of debugging these tests. He emphasizes that debugging is not just about identifying errors, but also about understanding the code's execution. This practice is vital for maintaining test quality, saving time, and learning from mistakes. Victor also provides insight into when and how to debug from using simple console log statements in JavaScript to more advanced tools in IDEs like Visual Studio. And he underscores that while tools are helpful, the essence of debugging lies in the developer's approach and understanding. So for a deeper dive into the nuances of debugging, especially when it comes to automated testing, you want to check out this full article as well. Hopefully you're watching this news show as soon as it comes up because tomorrow, which is August 22nd, Lambda Test is kicking off their second annual Test You conference. It's a three-day event with a bunch of awesome speakers like Anne-Marie, Pradeep, Shavani, Mahesh, and they also have a bunch of awesome sessions. I'll be, uh, I think I'm doing, uh, just kicking off the event really quick to do like opening house cleaning. And, and I'm also going to be moderating the decoding the future of QA and SDAT roles in the tech-driven world with Babu, who is the founder of Tesla, really excited about that. So if you haven't registered already, like I said, I know this is happening tomorrow. So if you're watching this right now, head on over to the link in the comment down below and register and hope to see you there. So you've probably been hearing about this, about Cyprus. Is Cyprus dying or not? You know, I thought this was put to rest a few weeks ago, but I keep seeing posts on it. So I just want to go over it really quick and get your opinion, what you think. So it all started with this Reddit post about I, I think it was in April, how it was talking about how they think they're predicting Cyprus is dying and they give their reasons why. And some of these reasons clearly are not accurate. For example, the uh, Cyprus Ambassadors is not a paid program. I don't know who wrote this or why they wrote it, but uh, you could see in the comments below what other people are saying, if it's true or not, or why they think it's not as well. And so the reason why I brought this up is that Zeman, who has been posting about this a lot, brought up another article on how he's actually standing by how he says it's dying. 
I'm not familiar with Zeman, but I do know some experts in Cyprus, such as Philip. And Philip is a Cyprus brand ambassador. He gets insights that a lot of us don't. I know he was on a call recently that actually addressed this. And he goes over in detail in a post he wrote, Cyprus is not dying and not to panic. So I was not going to bring this up uh, like a month or so ago, but I keep seeing it over and over again. Hopefully this puts it to bed. I always look to experts in Cyprus like Philip or even uh, Gleb and get their input on what they're doing. And Gleb is still posting on Cyprus. Philip is still posting on Cyprus. Cyprus is open source, so will it ever die? I don't think so. So just some good insight to get and check out and not to panic if you are a Cyprus user. But I'll be honest, I used to be a Windrunner user and the folks at Mercury swore. They said to my face, we're never going to kill Windrunner. We have too many users. And guess what? They killed Windrunner. So... I don't know. I'm saying Cyprus is not going away based on what I've seen, even though some people are saying it is. But you be the judge and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. So as I was researching Cyprus, I stumbled across open source and how open source might be dying. And so this doesn't necessarily apply to automation testing, but a lot of our tools in automation are open source. So I just thought this was an interesting take on what another company is shifting towards. And this talks about how HashCorp is adopting BSL and how an era of open source software might be ending. So if you don't know, HashiCorp is a key player in the open source software community, and it's announced a significant change in its own licensing approach. The company is transitioning from Mozilla's public license to a public or to a business source license, BSL, for each of its open source project. This source available license diverges from the traditional open source definition set by the Open Source Initiative, under the BSL, while users can access and modify the source code, they're restricted from using it commercially or for commercial services that rival HashiCorp's own offering. And this move reflects a broader industry trend with other enterprise infrastructure vendors, such as Redis Labs and MongoDB, reevaluating their open source commitments. HashiCorp's decision aims to address challenges posed by companies profiting from its open source projects without contributing significantly to their development. And I've seen this as well with Selenium. A lot of times companies build their tech on top of Selenium and they don't even contribute to Selenium. So this shift raises questions about the future dynamics of open source software in the enterprise tech landscape. And so for a comprehensive understanding of this evolving scenario and how it affects you using open source, this article goes into more depth that you should definitely should check out as well. So speaking of open source, a lot of times using an open source solution may not even be the right approach for you, especially if you work at the enterprise due to a bunch of different issues such as security and other things as well. So I just wanted to highlight, I just did a recent podcast with the folks at Element 34 that have a enterprise solution for Selenium Grid. So this is with Michael and Lee, and they go into detail on securing automation testing at scale, leveraging SBOX, which is an in-house, behind-the-firewall Selenium Grid solution I think you should definitely check out. So we go over in detail the benefits and challenges of using different test tools like Selenium Playwright and the compliance in automation testing when it has to do with security and other things when you're working within, say, regulated environments or big enterprises. And so we dive deep into different features and advantages of their SBOX solution, which includes the ability to run tests within the customer's firewall, which ensures data privacy, which is a big deal, especially if you're working in healthcare and insurance and things like that. So if this sounds like something that would help and benefit your company, I highly recommend you give this a listen and let me know your thoughts about that as well. All right, for links of everything value we covered in this news episode, head over to all the links in that first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools, free account offer, and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end -end full stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.